sewing machine for free motion quilting. Now, if you've been watching our Whip Wednesday episodes for a while now, since we've been doing them for what, I don't know, probably about two years almost, you will know that I often will use a smaller home sewing machine, my little Juki LB5020, to do the demos. And one of the reasons is because I can set up right here on my work table and I can just move the, the sewing machine out of the way. I can bring it in the shot. And that way, if I'm sharing different skills, techniques, and like doing demos for you, it's just the lightest machine that I have and it's easy to move around. Now, we do have some of these machines still in stock. And so what I wanted to do today is walk you through how I set up this little home sewing machine to do free motion quilting because I'm often surprised how many people say that they want to quilt, but they think that they need to have a bigger machine, a ton of throat space, a long arm, whatever it may be. And those things are great. I have those too, but I also wanted to share with you if you just want to get started or maybe you just want to quilt smaller projects, right? Smaller pouches, handbags, and things like that you can absolutely do that on a regular home sewing machine. So I'm gonna share some of my tips with you. Now just keep in mind that some of these things will vary because different makes and models of sewing machines and presser feet, but we'll cover that in a minute. So let's just make sure that everything is working. Um, uh, make sure that everything is working fine technology wise. If you can see me and hear me, just let me know in the chat box below where you are tuning in from. We live here in North Central Florida where the sun has finally come out again. Those of you that live in gloomy places, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> in the past week, we've had maybe out of two weeks, I would say about eight or nine days total where it's been overcast, freezing, and raining. No fun. I'm ready to get started. I'm actually wearing my little cucumber earrings today because I'm starting cucumber seeds for the spring garden. So if you garden, let me know what you're planning to grow in the spring. I will definitely uh, be growing a ton of stuff this spring here in North Central Florida. All right, awesome. Hi, Carol. She is tuning in from Wikiwachi, Florida. So that's a neighbor. We got Etta in the house from Georgia. Marion from Texas. We got Tanya from Texas also. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Nancy from Massachusetts. And we got Joyce in the house from Wisconsin. Great. All right. Oh, Rosalind tuning in from Ocala, Florida. That's less than an hour away from me, south of here. Hi, Lizette, tuning in from Canada. Okay, <clears throat> yes, Anne says, freezing, overcast, and gloomy is quite frequent in the UK. I have been to the UK, and I was miserable. <laughs> uh, I was just like, what, I need, I need sun. Like, I need the sun on my skin. Uh, so I'm excited. After I get done here, I'm gonna plant some more seeds um, outside and, and do a little bit of gardening prep work for the spring garden. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and switch to this over the shoulder shot so we can start walking through the different things that I recommend. Free motion quilting on a regular home sewing machine is really not that hard. Oh, on the other side for now. If I need you to move it, I'll tell you. Perfect. Yep. Okay, so there's a few things that I recommend that you have, and there's a couple different settings that you'll want to check and see if your machine has these options, all right? So the first thing we're gonna do is, let's see, let's talk about the presser feet. Why not? Let's start right here since I have this here. Now, you need to look and see if your sewing machine is low shank or a high shank. And I'm talking about home sewing machines. So this is, if you have an industrial, it may have a whole different setup, okay? But when we're talking about regular sewing machines of all the usual brands, you need to look and see if it's a high shank or low shank because if it didn't come with a free motion quilting foot, now there's a lot of words that you can, or names for these type of feet that you will hear, uh, often called free motion quilting foot, uh, open toe foot or open toe quilting foot. Uh, f uh, what are they called? Uh, I've seen it also called freehand embroidery. They're also called darning feet. It's basically a foot that has a spring usually here so that the foot can go up and down as you move the quilt sandwich around and it's some type of an open space here. Some of this, uh, some of the feet that you can find will have this in metal. Some will be plastic. Some will be smaller than this and fully enclosed. I like this one that has that cutout right at the front. It's like a letter C if you're looking at it like this, but when it's installed in the machine, it's like this. 
So I like it because this cutout allows me to see where have I just stitched and anticipate where am I going next because the metal part is not covering this area and I can see right where my needle's going up and down with my thread where I want to go next or what I've just done, especially if you're doing some type of a design that you don't want to cross over your lines. This just helps make it a bigger visual open space for you to see, okay? Oh, Debbie, she says, oh my gosh, thank you for this. No problem. It's funny because I've received at least five messages already. People are like, it's like you were in my head or you knew what I was working on in my sewing room. I'm getting ready to do free motion quilting. It's like you read my mind. So I'm glad that I'm doing this demo here today since it seems a lot of you are either getting back into free motion quilting or wanting to give it a try. So the foot that I have, okay, let's have a look at this. High shank or low shank? If we look at these two feet side by side, I think you can see that they are the same height, right? But the location, let me grab my pointer tool. The location of where the screw connects to the machine is in a different place on each of these. Can you see how this, and I'm going to try to align them as perfectly as I can. All right. So there, same size, but, and I'm gonna zoom in because I really want y'all to see this. Here is the area where I would connect the screw at my machine on this one up here. On this one, it's down here. So do you see how this is higher up? Meaning it's going to connect at a higher point on the ankle of your sewing machine. So high shank, low shank. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. So one of the things that you can do, and, and obviously if you just have one sewing machine, you're probably not going to have two different feet like this, like I do. I have a ton of different machines. A lot of the ones that are low shank, you can oftentimes use the same foot on either one, right? Because a lot of the machines are pretty much set up the same, but you can always check it by screwing it onto the ankle part of your sewing machine and see if it fits. So I'm going to switch to that. Let me um, zoom out a bit here. And we're going to install this foot. Now, this we don't carry this in the online shop, at least not right now, but I did include my Amazon affiliate link to the one that I buy for this machine. And so always just double check whether you have a high shank or a low shank sewing machine so you can figure out which is the one that you need for your machine. I'm trying to see what's the best way to... Let me see if I can hold this like this a bit because I do want you to see where it connects. Okay, hold on. Let's grab some batting and an extension table and use it to prop the machine up if I can. Maybe not. Okay, whatever. Let's try it there. So the screw on my sewing machine is here. If I take this guy and I place it here, you can... Whoop. <laughs> well, I'm going to break this machine. You can see, I think you can see. Can you see that there, Brennan? I can't see from that far. Anyway, let me just point the stuff out to you so you can see. The screw is down here. If I put this there, the part on this presser foot that connects is above the screw. So this is not the foot for this machine because it doesn't align with where it needs to be screwed in. That's. I think now when I show you the one that actually works, you'll be able to kind of wrap your head around it. So one is higher up and this one is down. So if I take this one and I place it here on my machine, let me see if I can do it without taking off the, um, let me unscrew it. So there, and I'm going to screw it in a little bit and then I'll show you where it's at so that way it doesn't move on me. But you need to figure out the basis, you know, the, 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 the whole reason I'm doing this to show you is to tell you that you need to figure out if you have a low shank or a high shank machine first and then get some type of a free motion quilting foot for your specific machine and make sure that the foot matches, that it's a low shank or high shank. So I put my affiliate link there for the Amazon post for this one that I have specifically for the low shank machines. It's like $7, the foot. So if you've never tried free motion quilting and you have this machine, maybe you purchased the Juki from us and you want to give it a try give it a try. But there's the screw. And I'm going to um 
So can you see how that screw is holding it in place and I have the clearance underneath the foot and if I press up on the foot, that spring is being activated so that it can be bouncing around as I do my free motion quilting. Okay, so I have my correct foot on here. Low shank for this specific machine. So that's one. Make sure that you have the right thing. Remember, again, you can have a variety of different feet, but that's just the one that I like to use because it's wide, it's open, and it has that notch cut out on the front. Okay. Great. So some of you are saying you can see it. Okay. Um, so Jessie's asking a great question. She says, so which foot you get depends on the machine, not what you are quilting. So yes, I can do free motion quilting with that foot. Um, this machine didn't come with one, so I don't have another smaller one to show you, but I can do free motion quilting with this enclosed with the small plastic one with, with any style of free motion quilting foot, but it needs to fit the machine. You have to be able to screw it into position and still have the clearance for your quilt sandwich. It still needs to do everything that allows you to do free motion quilting or thread painting or like freehand embroidery. You need to be able to have that foot go up and down and move or, or so that you can move the quilt sandwich underneath. Okay. So yes, you have to make sure it matches low shank or high shank. But aside from that, you can pretty much use, you know, whichever style of these feet that you like. Okay. Um, yeah. So Max says my performance foff has a small plastic foot called an embroidery slash sensor mastic free motion foot. I have yet to play with it. So that's going to be the foot that you want to put on and give it a go. So hopefully when I go through this little demo, share with you how to set up your home sewing machine, some of y'all will grab a little quilt sandwich and try it out. Okay. It's really not that bad. Obviously let's, let's keep it real though. This machine has this bitty much of throat space. Oops, I dropped my ruler. Okay, uh, from here to where the needle is, is about six and a half inches. So that's not a huge throat space. Just because I can set up my this little machine for free motion quilting does not mean I'm gonna work on a queen size quilt and then be like, I can quilt it on my Juki LB5020. I would never do that here. That's too big of a quilt. I'm gonna be fighting with it all day and all night and you're probably not gonna like the results because I'm limited. But I'm doing this to show you that you can still quilt stuff. You don't have to quilt an entire quilt. You can make uh, even a small baby quilt, a charity quilt, wall hangings like we talked about in last week's Whip Wednesday. I talked about making little mini quilts from leftover quilt blocks. Those are gonna be the perfect projects for you to try out all these techniques and quilt it. And that way you're getting more and more practice on a smaller scale, okay? So that's the idea behind this demo. Great. All right, um, let's see. Okay. so. We got the foot. Let's talk thread because we're going to set up the machine first and then we'll talk about the batting and the stuff. So thread. I have my favorite free motion quilting thread here. We carry it in a bunch of different colors and we pulled just a couple of the colors so you can see. This is a 40 weight, 100% polyester thread that has a beautiful sheen to it, comes in a ton of different colors. And of course, we put the links to everything in the chat box, the featured page on our shop page. If you've never shopped with us before, it's craftygemini.com. You can click the shop button and under the featured menu are the items that I'm featuring for today's demo. So you'll see them there and you can choose from the colors. My most favorite color is this light gray. I use this color, I would say, in 90% of my quilts, whether I'm quilting on a machine or on my long arm, because this light gray, this is called glide thread. Again, I said it's 100% polyester. I would not use this thread for construction. So like if you're sewing clothes or you're sewing patchwork pieces together to make the quilt top, I wouldn't use it for this. It has a slickness because of the sheen to it, and so it's not gonna be ideal for those construction seams. However, think of this, as a go-to thread for uh, decorative stitching. So think top stitching on your handbag projects. Think machine embroidery. If you're doing machine embroidery, this is a beautiful thread to use for machine embroidery. Free motion quilting, sit down on a machine, and also long arm quilting. This is my favorite go-to thread. Okay, so we carried again in a bunch of different colors. This is a thread I'm gonna recommend, and I know every time I use it, people are like, well, I don't have a long arm, what thread can I use? And so I wanted to show you that I use the exact same thread on the home sewing machine to quilt. Okay. So this is my favorite light gray. You can see that one's running a little low because I use it all the time. And in the bobbin, I have the same. 
So yes, you can wind a bobbin directly from this. Oftentimes, especially if you know about long arm quilting, you'll hear people say, well, I use the, the glide thread on top, but I use pre-wound bobbins. And that is just a great way to save time. We don't sell them in the shop yet, but you can buy from the same uh, manufacturer the thread that also comes in bobbins that uh, you just throw in here and go. And that way you don't have to spend the time to wind it, right? So that's kind of at a higher scale, mostly in professional settings. Long arm quilters want to just boom, boom, get through the quilting to finish the customer quilts, right? If you're using a home sewing machine like I'm going to be using here, you put the thread on top. You follow your little guidelines, you wind yourself a plain old bobbin just like you would with any other thread that you're gonna use, and we're just gonna put it in the machine. So, so far, same things, right? Nothing special to do free motion quilting. So I'm gonna put this in here. So same thread in the top and the bottom. And you don't have to do that every time, but when you're starting off, if you're new to free motion quilting or you have a new machine and you've never tried free motion quilting on it, you definitely want to minimize how many variables could cause you problems, okay? So instead of starting off with one thread on top and a different one in the bobbin, right? If you're having a stitch tension issues in your quilting, it, there's too many things going on for you to be able to pinpoint what you need to troubleshoot. So set yourself up with the simplest thing first. Same thread on top and on the bottom. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the needle. And I like to mention these things because oftentimes, you know, if you're reading a manual or a book or something, they probably won't tell you this, but I have done it enough times to tell you that if you only have size 80, 12 universal needles, you're going to be okay. If you're using a thin batting, you can use that needle to quilt. I've done it plenty of times. Ideally, you'd want to bump up, though, to about a 9014, either top stitch or universal needle. Seems to work fine in all the times that I've taught in person on different machines and stuff that I've tried. So an 8012 universal or a 9014 needle, okay? So I have my thread we've gone over, winding a bobbin with the exact same glide thread. I have the presser foot that matches the machine, whether it's low shank or high shank, okay? Check your user manual. You can also measure. It has to do with the distance from, um, from when the presser foot is down, I think, to where the screw is. It's either a half inch or three-quarter inch or something for low shank, and then I think it's like one inch for high shank. So just check that out and, and check your manual so you can see. You can also just Google like what the make and model is of your machine and type in high shank or low shank, and you should get the info there. Okay. Um, Damali's asking, so all cotton for piecing, but poly for top stitching, right? And free motion quilting. That's how I do it. I piece my quilts with 100% cotton thread, and then I'll free motion quilt with a polyester. That's how I do it. So, yeah. Um, let's see. So Debbie says, isn't, isn't the glide thread a bit pricey? Um, so use a cheaper all-purpose thread to practice with, right? Learning on. I mean, it can be. I find that there is so much thread on these, and I'll tell you the, the amount. There is a 1,000 meters on here. I use this stuff a lot, and it still takes me a good bit to go through one of these, and they're like five bucks each. So I don't think, it's definitely not the most expensive uh, free motion, like a uh, quilting thread that is, is on the market. I think it's one of the more affordable ones. And the fact that I can use it for so many different things, free motion quilting, machine embroidery, that kind of stuff is, it definitely makes it a go-to for me. So just keep that in mind. But yes, you can play around with, you know, whatever all-purpose thread that you have if you're just practicing the techniques and stuff. But keep in mind that if you're having issues with stitches or the tension, it can also be because of that thread. So if you're using an all-purpose thread that's thicker and chunkier, that may be causing you some stitch issues versus going with something that glides a little bit more smoothly through there, is not getting caught on anything, and is thinner. So that's another element that you'll need to troubleshoot as you play around, okay? So it's going to be a lot of trial and error type stuff. Okay. All right. Um... Uh, Jesse's asking, why polyester and not cotton to do the quilting? Is it personal preference? It is personal preference, but there's also some science behind it. I am someone who stitches super duper fast. So whether I'm free motion quilting on a machine like this or I'm on my long arm, I just go super fast. I crank the machine all the way up. And so as you can imagine, at higher speeds, 
you're getting more friction of that thread running through the needle eye. And so instead of the needle staying up and down stationary, like if you're doing a straight line of stitching, I'm swinging that thing back and forth, moving it around. And so you're going to get some deflection there in the tip of the needle. So if that thread is really rubbing hard against the eye of the needle at such a high speed, it will easily rub, 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 rub like anything else and break. Okay. And remember, we've talked about this a lot before is that cotton thread is a net made out of a natural fiber, right? The plant cotton synthetics like polyester are going to be stronger because they are man-made. So because I stitch at such a high speed, I don't do good with cotton thread because every couple of lines I'm breaking stitches uh, or breaking the thread because I'm stitching so fast. So that's something for you to work out too. You know, once you get into your groove, you can figure out at what speed you're stitching. And if you have a lot of broken thread, the thread can either be old or your maybe the cotton thread is, um, it is not suitable for your machine, your setup, and the speed at which you're quilting. So, hope that helps. Okay. Perfect. Let's move on. We talked about needle. We talked about thread. We talked about presser foot. Boom. The only other thing is my little machine. So, we have that here. Now, let's talk a little bit about um, let's do this, the setup of the table. So for those of you that have purchased the Juki LB5020 from us in the past, surprise, surprise, we now have added a new accessory to this. Whoop, whoop, whoop. We have the extension tables that we just added, and I think we only have a few left. So now we have this little extension table. If you have a different make and model and your machine came with one of these, you definitely want to pull it out for free motion quilting. It's going to just help give you a larger surface to work on so that you can apply more, whoops, more downward pressure and have more area for your hands to go on and so that you don't get that much drag off the side of the bed of the machine as you're working, okay? So this is super simple. You slide it out of the box. It comes like this. And again, all the stuff is in our online shop at craftygemini.com. You can see that this one has four legs. You just flip them out. There are also little screws here on the leg so that if you flip it over and attach it to the machine, if it's a little bit off or maybe your table is um, set on a floor that's maybe an old house and the floor has not is not level anymore, you can unscrew this and adjust them. Actually, you don't even have to unscrew them because they're turning already. So you can adjust them to go up or down individually so you can make it so that it's fully flat and level up against the side of your machine. Okay, so for me... I'm just going to remove the little accessory bin so you expose the free arm on your machine and all the machines are going to be like this if you're putting on an extension table to them. You got to get rid of the accessory bin to give it some clearance. Then we just place this here and I just slide it in. So I can see that this one is a little bit down. It's the one I was messing with. So I'm just going to go under here and turn it so that it stands up a little bit more for me. And now that's a little bit smoother of a transition from here to here. I could also probably put them, these two, I can stand to put these guys up a little bit more. And so that's how you do that. Okay, you set it up. Ta-da! My extension table is on. Now for this one, the dimensions are 11 inches. Remember, this is a, a smaller I would say like a secondary sewing machine, a travel sewing machine, or something for someone that has a smaller space. Or if you're teaching a new beginner, this is a great machine because you can grow with it. It has decorative stitches. It even has more here. Okay? And you have this little table. If you have a larger machine, chances are the extension table is going to be way bigger. But this gives you, I want to say it's like um, 11 inches this way. And then the table itself measures 15 and three quarters. So when we add this bit to it, the total workspace here is about 11 inches by 19. Okay. So not huge, but a great little space to work. If you're just starting off with free motion quilting and maybe want to quilt a little wall hanging first or placemats or panels to a purse or something. Okay. So that's that. Let's see. Norma says, I use my extension table for piecing and free motion quilting every time. It's so nice. It absolutely is. And some of you, let me just reference this real quick. If you have a table that has a custom cutout where you sit your machine into it, then you don't need an extension table, right? Because those types of tables are designed and made so that your machine is set up flat. So if you have a table like that, then obviously you'll probably have an even larger workspace because it's set into the table. This is a great secondary option for those of you that maybe don't have a dedicated workspace area and need to put the sewing machine away when you're done using it, that kind of stuff. And that way you can place it on a table and elevate your work surface to give you some bigger room here. Okay. 
Um, let's see. Lindy says, will this extension table fit the LB5100? It's the same machine as this one. It just has more stitches and it will fit it. Um, the part, this is a Juki part. It's the JL table and it fits both machines. So yeah, great question, Lindy. I only listed it as fitting this because this is the only, we only sell this machine in our shop, but it does fit both. So yes. All right. Let's see. Um... <clears throat> uh... Yes. Oh, Yolanda makes a great point. She says, also, if you do your free motion quilting with cotton thread, it creates more lint, especially if you're doing some dense and heavy quilting. Remember that cotton is a natural fiber and it's going to give you more lint uh, than a synthetic like polyester that's not like linty and fluffy like that, like a cotton thread typically is. Okay. So yeah, that's another great tip. Uh, Max is asking, will this tutorial be available later for viewing? Absolutely. All our Whip Wednesday episodes are recorded as we are doing them live, and then they'll be posted in the exact same place you're watching this one. So you can always go back and rewatch it. Okay. So needle, we've talked about, um, uh, the, the, the presser foot, whether your machine is low shank or high shank. We've talked about the glide thread. We talked about winding the bobbin with the same thread, top and bottom extension table to give me a little room here. Perfect. So the machine is pretty much set up. Let me take off the table so I can put it back on. Those legs, they just flip in and out and they come um, undone pretty easily, which is great because you can put it away super quick and easily too and set it up. You don't have to have a setup where you have everything already out for you to be able to use it. It only takes a minute or so to set up. Okay. So now let's talk about batting because this also affects. I oftentimes have had students in the past who are trying out free motion quilting and they are just, there's no way that they're having all kinds of tension issues and all that. And when they send me a picture, I oftentimes see that the batting is like a super thick, fluffy polyester batting. And so you got to think that when we make a quilt sandwich and we're adding that additional layer in between the fabric, the thickness of that middle layer is going to make a difference too. Okay. So here is an example. I just took a piece of fabric today, a little scrap piece, and I just folded it in half with some batting on the inside. If you look at this from the side, you can see that this quilt sandwich still has some good drape. Okay. The batting is not super heavy. Now, when you're looking at this type of stuff to select which thickness or what batting um, you want to use, say you're in a shop, don't just think of it like this, like, oh, this is pretty light. You have to also kind of envision what the finished quilt is going to be in terms of weight. You have cotton fabric on top, cotton fabric underneath, and then whatever stitching you do through the layers, the quilting part of it, whether it's super dense quilting or really open spaced out, all that new amount of thread that you're introducing in those stitches is going to affect the finished weight. Okay. So think about that too, when you're planning out the quilting in your projects, if you want the quilt to be drapey, there are two things that I would keep in mind. One, choose a batting that is thin cotton and lightweight and two, design your quilting so that it's more open, more spacious and not as densely quilted. Now, if you want a wall hanging, you can often use a denser, thicker batting. You don't have to, but I'm just saying like, if you really want something to say, it's going to hang just flat on the wall, like a poster almost, and then you can densely quilt it, right? The more thread you put into that project, the more stiff it's going to be. Okay. <clears throat> um, Linda's asking for the link to the shop, uh, to the table in the shop. So you can check out craftygemini.com slash shop. Um, it's probably like the latest item that's been added there. So it should be like the first or second one, or you can click on the featured tab. And then we also have the link. If you're watching us on YouTube, the link is in the chat and in the description box below the video, as well as in the chat on, um, Facebook. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm making sure I don't miss anything else. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about these two scrap pieces of batting that I have here. It's funny because I can tell the difference in them since I'm very well versed in this batting. It's what I've been using probably for the past seven or eight years. <clears throat> if I were to give this to anybody else, I don't think you'd be able to tell one from the other. A quilter might, right? Because if we make different quilts, we oftentimes choose the batting based on the application. If I live in Florida, like I do, and I want to make a light quilt to have on the couch, I'm not going to use a super thick batting because I don't need it right? I live in warmer climates, a thin batting, a quilt that's drapey is going to be just fine. And those of you that have been following me for a long time have heard me mention quilters dream request. 
I often still get questions. People are like, what is the thickness again? Or what is the loft that you like for the lightweight quilts? And it's this. This is um, Quilter's Dream Cotton Batting Request is their thinnest loft. It comes in request. And then the second, which is their middle of the ground loft, the thickness of it is select. So we carry this in a bunch of different sizes, like crib, twin, whatever. Um, uh, let me see. We don't have any craft size right now. I think we have crib, throw, twin, and some doubles. So they're packaged at this size. And so if you've never worked with this batting, I would highly recommend grabbing a pack, even in the crib size, that you could use for smaller projects, whether they're wall hangings or a little baby quilt or placemats or something, so you can familiarize yourself with how light and drapey this batting is. But I'm gonna try my best to kind of show you here. And it's not so much how thick it is, it's like there's just more fiber and it's more dense than this one. So this is Request. And if you look at it, I mean, look how drapey it is. Okay, always keep in mind that we're adding two layers of fabric plus thread in the quilting. So the quilt is not gonna be flowing around like this necessarily, but it will still be way lighter than some of the thicker battings on the market. Okay, so that's that. I mean, just by going like this, you see how it curves? That's drape, okay? Now the next one, I can feel it in my hand, it just is a little bit more dense. Like there's almost more fiber uh, packed into this little sample here. And you can see it still is drapey but you see how like I'm trying to bend it. And it's just like, the other one was like bending in two different little curved areas. And this, this one bends in more like one big one. Okay, so that is how I can tell that it's more dense. And this is the select weight, the second, okay? Still a lightweight batting. But when I say I'm making my Florida quilts that y'all have heard me mention in the past years, for years and years, it's this one. This is Quilter's Dream Cotton in the Natural, so it's not bleached or anything. And it is request is the loft, okay? The thickness of it or the, the lightest weight one. Now I did pull down one of my mini quilts from my wall. Um, let's go ahead and switch to my face because I think I can show this better like this. Some of y'all came to a retreat with me before years ago at Missouri Star. Remember when we did this um, Any Which Way mini quilt? It's a wall hanging. So this was hand quilted and it's a foundation paper piece pattern. But I mean, oh, Imagine a baby quilt like this. It's so light, and here's where I can tell. You know when you fold up a regular quilt, that it's like fold and fold and fold and fold, and it's chunky because it's so thick and you have those layers? L look at this quilt, that's four layers right there. I'm gonna fold it again. It is so thin. It's my favorite batting, y'all. Look at this. If you make a lot of quilts and you don't have a lot of closet space, <laughs> use this batting so that you can pack them all on a shelf, okay? So do you see that? And it's so light. And this quilt, I know somebody's gonna ask, is just a little wall hanging. So it measures about 24 inches. Twenty four by about thirty or so, okay? So imagine this as a little play mat for a baby that the mom and the dad can throw in a, in a diaper bag. You literally can just roll this thing up and lay it out anywhere. These are my kind of quilts. And a baby quilt won't be that much bigger than this. So you can do that, wrap it up and make a super cute gift. So this is what I wanna show y'all. Like the batting is so thin. If you've used the polyester, like really puffy batting for your quilts in the past, you know you won't be able to roll this up like this, all right? So, yes, Terry says, oh, Vanessa, the summer quilt weight. It's good for the summer and the AC as well. Absolutely. Yeah, we have AC here. We live in Florida. But it's just, you don't always want like, oh, this is my favorite quilt. And it's like, lug this huge thing, especially if it's a bed quilt. Like, my kids have bed quilts that I've used thicker batting on, and they're heavy. You know, I feel like if they're going to take it with us to the park or something, they're not going to grab the chunkier ones because it's just like, oh, one more thing to lug around. But these for Florida, for warmer climates, for babies, for kids, play mats, that kind of stuff. And even for wall hangings, because this is a wall hanging for he for my studio here. It definitely, I mean, you can see it just is so drapey and so, so nice. Okay. So. That's my favorite quilt batting. Let's go ahead and switch to the camera here again so we can talk a little bit more about setting up the machine and free motion quilting. So just wanted to show that and give you the visual. Lindy says, lightweight beach blanket. Absolutely. 
And you're still adding that middle layer that we want, right, in a quilt, but it just is so, so soft. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So let's come back to this. So we talked about the Quilter's Dream cotton. We said this is... This is request. I was like, whoa, am I lost for a second there? This is the request. And you can almost see through it a little bit. There's some spots where it's like a little bit more sheer. Obviously, I didn't iron these or steam them. And that's another thing to note that you can. When you open up the package, you can just hit it with some steam or hit it directly with a warm iron, a steam iron. It's 100% cotton, so you can do it on both sides, okay? So that's that. Again, we do have a link for it because we sell them in the shop and we have a bunch of different sizes in both the request and the select. If we're sold out of something, we'll restock too. Um, but if you haven't given it a try, definitely try it. It's made here in the U.S. with USA cotton and stuff, and I've been using it for years. The family-based business, they're great. Okay. Oh, Maureen has a great question. She says, could you use that on a t-shirt quilt? That would be fabulous on a t-shirt quilt. Absolutely. Especially because, you know, sometimes those t-shirts, uh, they'll either be like cotton poly blend. Some of them are thicker and lighter than others. If you kind of want to make it a little bit more uniform without adding an additional entire batting layer of bulk, that would be great to use in t-shirt quilts. Yes. Okay. Now... I want to set this up so that, I mean, I'm not going to be quilting anything today, but I do want to show you. We've gone through the main setup of the machine. There's a couple more things we need to work on here, but let's go ahead and prep ourselves a little quilt sandwich. Let me grab my rotary cutter. And I'm just going to cut this chunk of fabric and I'm going to fold it. Let's use the request. Maybe I should do this for some of you that maybe have never quilted before. So the idea is you have quilt backing and it goes pretty side of the fabric face down. Then the second layer is your batting or whatever you're using for the middle layer. This is just what we most often use is quilt batting of some kind. And then say your quilt top, all your patchwork pieces, the amazing design and stuff that you made for the front of the quilt, right? The top that goes on top of the batting with pretty sides facing up. Okay, so this is your quilt sandwich. Something this small, I wouldn't even bother to baste. I frankly wouldn't even bother to spray baste or hand baste. This is enough for me to just hold with my hand and set up on my machine. So now the quilting part of it, we're going to stitch through all three of these layers in whatever design we want, right? After you plan that out or you practice for hours and hours and then some more hours, then you can decide what design you want to do and, um, stitch it out on here. Okay, so I have my mini quilts. Let's say I want to start quilting. Um, Terry's asking, is that batting as thin as fusible fleece, which is great for art quilts too, she says. So it's not, or excuse me, it's thinner than the Bolzo light fusible fleece that, that I use. And that's lighter than the regular fusible fleece, like the Pellon fusible fleece. I use a fusible fleece um, that we sell in the shop too, and it's thinner. And this is even thinner. Plus, you don't have the added layer of the adhesive because that adds a little bit more stiffness to it as well. So if you're looking for something even drapier for your art quilts, uh, the, the Quilter's Dream Request batting would be great. But then again, in art quilts, you typically have a lot of stitching anyways if you're doing like thread painting kind of stuff. Uh, and then it ends up being a little bit stiffer anyway. So I don't think that would matter too much if that's the case. Susan is asking, can I use it in a quilted vest? Absolutely, especially if you want some drape to that. Remember, the less quilting you do on the fabric, the more it will drape, especially with a lightweight batting like this. So I would love to see that if you try it. Um, but you can make anything that's quilted. A quilt, a quilted bag, quilted wall hanging, quilted placemats, quilted coasters. Anything that is a quilted project, you can use this quilt batting in, okay? All right, so we have this. <clears throat> now, let's go back to the machine because we're basically ready. <laughs> This machine has a feature, let's swap this around, that allows me to drop the feed dogs. So for those of you that don't know or maybe have not inspected your sewing machine, let me grab it with this. The sewing machines have these little metal teeth, and I'm just going to um, bring it up because I had already set it down because I want them to come up so you can see them. Oh, why do these machines have to have such like small things that even with my super zoom lens, 
Aha, I got it. Now y'all can see it. So do you see these little teeth that are creeping up right here, up from the bottom of the machine? It's like little metal serrated bits, okay? Those four lines, one, two, three, and four. Those are little teeth that are called feed dogs. I don't know why they're called feed dogs, but they do help feed your sewing machine, or excuse me, they help feed your fabric through the sewing machine as it's stitching, okay? And so these guys, they go up and down. If you've ever seen your sewing machine, like when you're sewing or if you've turned the hand wheel to see what's going on as far as the mechanics of the machine, you'll see that every time you take a stitch, these little guys, they go down to the machine, they come up, they go down, they come up, like they're pulling the fabric through as you take your stitches, okay? So you can imagine that when we are free motion, meaning I'm gonna swing my quilt sandwich any which way I want, you probably don't want these going up and down and pulling your fabric in this one straight direction, because we're not doing straight stitches, right? Now, I'll mention here, if you are doing straight stitches and you want the machine to help you feed the three layers of your quilt sandwich through, then you may wanna look into getting a walking foot for your machine or a dual feed foot. Some of you that have FOFs or like the Juki um, NX7 that I have back here, it has a built-in dual feed, so you don't actually have to change out uh, the presser foot, but that's, that's for sewing straight lines. Here we're talking about, I wanna move any which way and do swirls and lines. So what I do, and this is just my personal preference, is I go to the back of my machine here and I switch this little lever to bring my feed dogs down. I want them disengaged. Do not pull my fabric. I will do the controlling of the fabric. That's basically what I'm telling the machine by doing that. Now, if your machine doesn't have this feature, can you still free motion quilt? Probably yes, okay? So sometimes the machines will come, like more entry level machines, they'll come, they won't have this feature and they'll come with like a little clear plastic lid that you can attach on top of the feed dogs and it's basically just covering them so that you can go in and do your free motion quilting. Now, I have some friends that do free motion quilting and they have this feature, but they don't engage it. What they do is they change the stitch length on the machine settings to zero so that the machine is not really pulling through because you've told the machine, hey, I need a stitch length of zero. Basically, don't go anywhere. I will control it when I'm free motion quilting. So I want to mention that because there are different ways to achieve the same result, okay? You have to play around with your machine and you gotta read your user manual. If you ain't read it yet, pull out your user manual and see because you might not have this lever on the back. Some machines have them on the front, like here. Some machines have it here. You have to you know, know your machine and know its capabilities, all right? So you can set yourself up. Okay, whoa, let me not tip my whole thing. Hold on. Maybe there. Okay, next, let's go ahead and put, so I put my feed dogs down. That means that when I take a stitch, oh, <laughs> And I'm about to blow a lot of y'all's minds right now because I know some of you have had this happen and nobody ever tells you why. I have the feed dogs down, okay? After I'm done with this little free motion quilting demo or whatever, I try to remember to go back in and put the feed dogs up. So here's one thing that's gonna happen. And I'm gonna do it on camera so that you can see. I'm gonna flip them back, feed dogs up. Now I moved the feed dogs back up, but my feed dogs didn't come up. So now you're thinking, I broke the machine. I set them back up and they're not coming up, right? So like I go down, they're down, I bring it up, nothing's happening here and people will freak out. You're not gonna see them come up by doing this. When the machine takes a stitch, then they will come up. And I'm just gonna do that by turning this hand wheel that way, because that's the front of the machine. You always wanna turn that towards you if you're looking at the machine. And you'll see, hopefully, that they will pop up here. Let me see if I can zoom in a bit. So if that's happened to you and you like freak out because you're like, I broke my machine, the feed dogs are not coming back up. Because if you wanna sew straight stitches and you wanna work on a different project, you need them feed dogs to come up, right? So I'm turning the hand wheel towards me, the needle goes down and ta-da! It came back up and so did my feed dogs, okay? So remember that when you switch that lever back to put the feed dogs up, Take a stitch and you'll see them pop up. There you go. That's, that, that's my tip of the day because you don't know how many times I've explained that to people and they're like, oh my gosh, I never thought to take a stitch and see. Okay. <clears throat> All right. 
and I'm over here taking stitches. So let's cut this, have everything ready for uh, set up so we can do some quilting. And okay, so now you know. Let me make sure I put them back down. <laughs> Feed dogs down. Everything else in place. Let's put my table back on. Pop out all my legs. Table. Back on. Okay. Now, <clears throat> hold on because I really want to pull this thing forward. It's so hard to have like a zoom lens and still want to get a wider shot. Okay. That'll be okay for now, I think. Now here, this is a new extension table. It's pretty smooth, it's pretty slick. There's no dust or dirt or grime or anything on it. So I should not really have a problem running my quilt sandwich under here. And you can see even with one finger, I can pretty much move it. But there are some areas where things can get hung up a little bit. So here are some accessories that can help you if you find that you really wanna dive into free motion quilting. Okay, let's see. Oh, I see some of y'all are saying that the same things about the um, bringing the feed dogs up or down <clears throat> that thought you had broken the machine and stuff. Okay. Ah, Gina says, OMG, I never knew that about the feed dogs. Ta-da! That's why I'm here, Gina, to help bring you the info. <laughs> okay. So, accessories that will help. We have this product called a Sew Slip 2 mat that is a really affordable. There's some other ones on the market that can be super pricey. And so I decided years ago to carry this one because I liked it. We use it at my retreats and um, it works great. Again, you don't have to, but like as you start getting into it more and more, some of these accessories can really help, especially if you're gonna be doing more and more free motion quilting. So let me show you mine because this is the one I've had for years. It comes like this. This top part is slick. The bottom part is like a little bit tacky and you can see that it kind of sticks a little bit. There is no adhesive. You don't have to do anything. It comes with a brown paper, like a craft paper sheet that you can roll it into. I'm not that organized. Mine is just rolled up and thrown in a drawer. So when there's a lot of lint or cotton bits and stuff that get on this, on the tackier side, I just rinse it with water. Literally just rinse off all the lint, let it dry. You can even wipe it down with something that's not linty. And then when it's dry, you can just reuse it. So there's no actual like adhesive or anything. And then the box that's here is a cutout for the feed dogs, okay? And that works out great because if you are someone who's setting up uh, your machine for free motion quilting and you keep your feed dogs up or you don't have the function to bring them down, this still will give you the clearance so that they can come up and down and not affect anything else, okay? Now you can see that the mat measures almost perfectly for this little extension table. You can trim it down to match perfectly, but why? You know, if you have another machine and another table, just have it, there's maybe like an inch of overhang on the back. The rest fits super good, okay? And the mat itself measures 12 inches by 18 inches. So just so y'all know, if you're gonna use it, this doesn't have to be for this. This can be for a machine that's set into a table. You can use this on another extension table on different machines. It works great, okay? Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy's asking for the name of the slider mat. <clears throat> it's called the Sew Slip 2 mat. And we we still have some in, the, in our online shop. So we'll put a link to that in the chat box below, in the description box of the video. All the featured items from today's demo will be there for y'all. Okay, so say I'm going to use this. Boom, it's in place. The only other thing <clears throat> that I absolutely like to use, and we've been using these for years after my friend Laura, hey Laura, told us about these at a retreat, are these free motion quilting gloves by Marcia Baraldi. She is a Brazilian award-winning quilter and teacher and author, and she designed these little gloves for free motion quilting. I'll tell you why I like them. If you've not been in my quilt clubs and classes in the past, um, maybe you've never heard me say this before, but these are great because they have a grip here at the palm, but all my fingers are open and exposed. If you've ever tried wearing full finger gloves to do free motion quilting, you know what a hassle it is to take them off to change the bobbin, to take them off to adjust your needle, to take them off 
to replace a broken needle, to take them off for practically everything you need to do because we have these fine motor movements that we need to do with the tips of our fingers. And then also if you have sweaty hands, that is like the worst. My hands sweat so bad in um, full finger gloves. And I live in Florida, like no, I'm not wearing all that. So these are my favorites. This is how they come, and this is my color. She used to sell them in colors. I think now they're all just black. So this is the package that it comes in, and we do have these in the online shop. We still have some left, okay? So this allows you to grip your quilt sandwich, still be able to move your fingertips, but it allows you to kind of anchor them like the palms down and work in this space. So if I go like this, and, and, and I'm not... A hurricane fan okay but you know if you go like this and I put my palms down this is the area that I can basically in full movements quilt okay without having to go like all the way over and of course we're working on a smaller bit here so <clears throat> just keep that in mind so if this was one quilt block and I wanted to do some stippling or free motion right inside of the quilt block I could absolutely do that. This helps me anchor it down, but I can still manipulate things or get into a corner or make sure that I stitch right into like a, an intersection of the patchwork by pulling things like this here and there with my fingertips. So if you don't have these, I know a lot of y'all already do because we've been selling these for years and using them for years. Um, they're a great addition, especially if you've gone through multiple types of gloves. I know some people like cut two fingers off of the full finger gloves so that they can use a couple fingers and all that. These are great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Margie says, these um, free motion quilting gloves are wonderful. I'm glad you love them. And Yolanda says, I love those gloves too. Awesome. Yep. Norma says she has these. She Or she has. She says she's used the full finger gloves and they are sweaty. Agreed. Okay. Yes, Mickey, she says, hey, Mickey, she says, those gloves look much more useful than the gloves I have. I love these. I mean, and I have tried a lot of stuff, even like the little discs that you hold on to. Those are pretty cool. But if they slip out of your hand, then they're gone right here. I have um, like a hook and loop tape straps and the rest of your hand can breathe, too. If you only feel like you need to wear one to move stuff around and have the other hand free, you can do that, too. It's it. They really are great. OK. So now, let me get my machine set up here with my foot pedal. Okay, let's go over it. We did the needle, the thread, the presser foot, the feed dogs are down. I have my quilt sandwich. I put my sole slip to mat. I have my gloves. We're ready. <laughs> it's easy. It's not that much stuff. Um, yeah, if you have all the right tools and practice a little trial and error, then you can set up your home sewing machine. Because remember, this is not even a full-size sewing machine. It's like a three-quarter size, great for travel, and I can still do free motion quilting on here. Now, the last setting before I start flooring this thing is I'm going to also change. Remember when we were talking about the feed dogs, I mentioned that some people don't put the feed dogs down, and instead they just change their stitch length to zero. On this machine, I do both. I put the feed dogs down and I set my stitch length to zero. So what's gonna happen? There's not gonna be any feed dogs pulling my fabric through this way. I am going to be able to move the machine, or excuse me, move the quilt sandwich any which way I want. And the machine does not have a stitch length that it's going to be making because it's not gonna be pulling my fabric either, okay? It's just, I'm basically telling the machine, hey, leave the needle in the center position and don't do nothing but come straight up and down. I will take care of everything else, all right? So that is what we're doing. Um, Pat says, do you have to worry about the black gloves if you are doing a white quilt? No, it's like a neoprene type fabric on these. So it's not like a hairy, you know, fuzzy type of fabric that will give off any, any um, fiber fluff from it. So you should be good on that. Okay. Glenda's asking, do those hand grippers come as a pair left and right? They do, because remember, as you wear them, you have to... If you look at it like this, this opening that is attached to this side is for your thumb. So they are different. They're not just like interchangeable. There's one for your left hand and one for your right. So you see that? They're mirror image of each other. Okay? So yeah, great question. And my kids have used these before. I think they ended up coming out with some smaller ones for kids' hands. But my kids have used these before to do sit-down free motion quilting years ago. And they found them, you know, easy to use as well. Okay, perfect. But yes, oh, sorry, you were probably asking the question about do they come in a pair because you only see one there, but the other one's on the back. 
I didn't even realize that. So yes, one and two. The pair comes in the pack, okay? All right, so now, and I'll mention real quick here, if you've never tried free motion quilting, I have a seven part free video series on my YouTube channel. All you gotta do is a quick search, Crafty Gemini free motion quilting, and I go through setting it up on a different machine so you can see a different method of how I set up on a, a semi-industrial Juki on my 2010Q. And then I give you a bunch of different exercises that you can practice. I show you the movements to do so that you can build up that skill set and that muscle memory of where to move, you know, the, the quilt sandwich for different projects, for different designs, okay? So now I'm getting ready to quilt. I am going to start maybe here on the corner, why not? My presser foot is down so that I make sure that there's still pressure being applied um, to the thread going through this tension assembly here. This is still your top tension. So you'll see, I don't know that you can see it, but if the presser foot is up or down, this part of the foot does not move. So it's easy, and the reason I'm mentioning that is it's easy to mistake it for the presser foot being down, but it's actually up because the foot is still just sitting on top of the fabric. So it's like any other stitching. Make sure that the presser foot is down before you start sewing because this top thread is running through the tension assembly here and you wanna make sure that the tension is set to still apply some of that pressure, right? So you don't have floppy thread all over the place. Y'all know how it looks when you don't have your tension settings correctly, okay? And you won't see, the, if this tension is off here, you won't see the problem here. You'll see it underneath. So you always wanna test, you know, stitch a little, stop, Look underneath and see. So that's another tip. If the problem in your stitches is underneath, the issue is coming from the top thread and this tension assembly, something here. So you should pull the thread out and re-thread the machine. If you start stitching and you see the issue here on top of the project, the issue is in the bobbin. So it might not have been um, installed correctly in the bobbin area of the machine. So it's reversed. Okay, so we're gonna start here. I'm making sure my presser foot is down. It doesn't affect the foot, but I know that that means that these tension discs here are closed and I have proper tension. Then I'm going to use my needle up down button to put the needle into the project. If you don't have a needle up down because you don't have a computerized machine, just turn the hand wheel towards you to bring the needle down into the project. And I'm gonna bring it back up. And what that's doing is taking one stitch. And when it does that, the top thread is now getting together with that bobbin thread so that when I lift it, we've taken a stitch. And what I wanna do now is pull on this to bring that bobbin thread up. And you know what, I'm gonna zoom in a bunch because I have a weight on this thing and I don't really wanna mess with it too much. Okay. So I've bought the bobbin thread up. I think you can see that, maybe. Okay, bobbin thread up. Then I'm gonna put the needle right back down in that same spot. My presser foot is down. Okay, now I'm gonna start stitching. The needle is down, I position my hands, and because I've started off to the side, you know, I don't have anything here to hold, I can just do something here, so. Let's play. Now, I will mention, because we set the stitch length to zero too, remember I said I am in complete control of what my stitches look like, okay? So what happens? The stitch length of these free motion stitches can vary greatly because you are controlling the movement. So if you swipe your quilt sandwich super fast in one direction, you're gonna get a stitch that's gonna be like from here to here, and it's gonna be a huge jump, right? Because you move the project way faster than the machine took to go up and then down again for the next stitch. So you have to find a steady pace at which you want to quilt, okay? I'm stitching on a home sewing machine, on a smaller travel size machine, there is no stitch regulator. <laughs> this is not a $20,000 long arm, okay? There is no stitch regulator to regulate the length of these stitches. Instead, you need to put in the work and practice so that you can self-regulate the stitches. For me, I've been doing this a long time, so I can you know, pretty easily keep them about the same length. 
Usually if you go around the curve for a swirl or something like that, we tend to whip it around quicker. And so along the outside edge of swirls or circles, you'll often find that you have slightly longer stitches. And it just comes with like the, the faster, more swoopy motion that you did in that area. Okay. And don't worry, I'm going to give you a, a close up after. It's just that the light from the machine is, um, where is the bulb? Here? Nope. It's back here, here, here. Yeah, I can't even reach up there to block it to show you, you know, a little bit of what I did. But I also wanted to show you how well the light gray glide thread blends in. This is green. This has no gray in it. And you can see that it just adds texture and barely any color. So uh, I was mentioning that the light gray glide thread is my favorite because I use it on light fabrics and on dark, not, uh, not, not like dark, like black fabric, but on darker tones or fabrics that have navy in them and darker, richer colors the gray still works great. So it's really like my go-to. All right, let me just come this way. So now I have my machine on a home sewing machine. Can you see that I have this set to the fastest speed? So by flooring it to the fastest speed, I am basically taking away an, an additional variable of the speed of the machine. So what I do is I go all the way fast, and I go all the way floor the machine with my foot pedal. So I don't have to think about where I'm going and also be like putting pressure, taking off, putting pressure. That's too jerky of two different movements. You don't want to do that. It's going to be really hard for your brain to focus on what you're doing here and also be controlling the speed of the foot pedal. Okay. So I get rid of the foot pedal movement altogether. I go super fast and press the foot pedal. Something else that some of you may want to use or to do to get rid of having to press the foot pedal period is to use the start stop function on your computerized machine. If your sewing machine has a function where you can unplug the foot pedal and just press this button, mine is blinking at me and telling me, Hey, the foot pedal's connected. You can't use that while the foot pedal is connected. But I could unplug the foot pedal and just when I'm ready to sew, I go boop, hit the start button. It will start stitching at whatever speed I set it to. And that way you don't even have to think about the foot pedal. Okay. And then when you're ready to stop, you just press the button again. So that's one way to get rid of that factor where it's, you know, using up more brain power. Okay. Okay. So Debbie's asking a great question that has to do with what I'm talking about here. She says, is there a go-to tension setting for free motion quilting or what determines that? So, um, now that I'm reading it again, if you're asking about the tension setting here, that's going to depend on your sewing machine, how that's affected by the speed at which you're sewing, how thick your thread is and what it is, how thick your quilt sandwich is. If you're using thicker layers, you may consider going down on the tension and loosening it up a little bit because it has to go through so many more layers, right? More bulk. For this, especially if you grab a pack of that Quilter's Dream cotton qu uh, uh, batting, you can stitch through this on any machine. I mean, this machine is not a quilting, is not a quilting machine, but as you can see, I'm quilting. So let's keep going a little bit more. I mean, this really is easy. It's a dream. You can obviously need practice, so you can practice on smaller bits. You can do little pieces of fabric and little sandwiches like I'm doing here, and then cut them up and add a zipper and make a zippered pouch, you know? Those are ways that you can practice these free motion quilting um, movements. I'm not doing a great job of not crossing my lines over, but I make this look, I think, a little bit easier than it is to talk and quilt at the same time. <laughs> but I'm doing some swirls here. And so even on this $300 some dollar machine, I could easily quilt even a bigger, you know, I mean, I would probably, I have a long arm, so it's hard for me to like want to do sit down free motion quilting because I have a bigger frame to set it up at, right? But like this is not that bad that I would easily try even like a baby quilt on here. You could absolutely do it on this machine. So I just pulled up the bobbin thread, took another stitch, and that way the bobbin thread comes up. I usually just try to stop, like whenever I take the last stitch of the actual design, I usually will take a few stitches in place to help anchor it in before I do that of pulling up the thread and all that stuff. So let me just show you, <laughs> because I want you to see the stitch quality too. I mean, on a little machine, let me take off these gloves. 
it's not, I mean, it's not bad at all. Like a lot of times people think, well, I want to get into quilting. I need to buy a super expensive machine. Look at that. And this is the light gray glide thread. You can see that the stitches are pretty uniform as far as their length. Around the curves a little bit, I tend to, like I mentioned earlier, speed up a bit. And so my stitches can be a little bit bigger in these areas. But, I mean, you can quilt all kinds of cool projects and have them look, you know. I think it looks fine. <laughs> um, it's tricky to see because that light gray thread really blends in too. And then this is the back. So same thread in the bobbin. And I just was, you know, doing whatever old designs going back and forth. Okay. So no tension issues. I haven't touched anything. We did put the feed dogs down. I did use that open toe foot and I set my stitch length down to zero. No excuses. Grab your sewing machine, and I think anybody will be able to do some quilting. But again, because the batting that I used is light, it's still a pretty drapey quilt. Okay? So try that out. Um, if you're like me and you don't just like to practice something without doing it in the actual project, uh, make a little mini quilt, make one off blocks, see if you have leftover blocks in your stash, put some batting behind them and just practice quilting them. And that is obviously how you're gonna get better by quilting more and more stuff. Now, I have a couple projects that feature, well, I have a lot of them, I just featured a couple. And here's just one that I happen to have here that feature free motion quilting, but instead of using quilt batting, we're using the quilt or the foam, the bozal inner form, okay? So this is one that I quilted and I did do these swirls on my long arm because you can also quilt uh, foam, but you can see it's the same idea, still free motion quilting. And this is something that you don't need a long arm to quilt because look at the panels. This is one panel. You could cut up a couple of fat quarters, layer it up with your batting or your foam, say you're working on this. This is my sunset project bag. And then you can just quilt it in that small chunk, okay? The, the gusset here is our two long skinny panels. Again, it's not huge. It won't eat up all your uh, throat space and you can uh, quilt the individual panels easily on a home sewing machine. And because they're quilted together, like the layers, the outside here and the inside here, whatever quilting you do on the outside, you see on the inside, okay? so. Let me take that off of there. And then there's a little pocket here. So this is one of the bags featured in my last um, online bag club. You can see the little mesh pocket here. But I'm just wanting to show you this as an example of something you can make once you practice you know, your free motion quilting skills. You can quilt these in individual smaller panels without feeling like you need to tackle a queen size quilt, okay? To, to work on your, on your skills, your free motion quilting skills. All right. Okay, um, Glenda says, what do you do at the beginning where you pull the bobbin thread up? So I pull the bobbin thread up and then I go right back down in place and I usually will start, but I'll hold it for a second or two so I can take a couple stitches in place and then I start. And if you watch the exercise series of the video, the free motion quilting uh, videos that I have, that video series, it's a seven part free video series on my YouTube channel. Just do a search for Crafty Gemini free motion quilting and they'll pop up for you. On there, I show you a super close up of exactly how I bring it up and how I do it, how I anchor the beginning and ending stitches and all that. So those are gonna be some great resource videos for you to check out so you, you can practice. Um, Crystal's asking for the link to the gloves, please. So we do have the link um, in the shop. So craftygemini.com slash shop. Then in the sub menus, click featured to see the featured products for today's Whip Wednesday. And you'll see the gloves there. Okay, we have all that. And then we've also put it in the chat box for you. Okay. Yes, Norma, what a great suggestion. She says baby bibs would be a great free motion quilting practice piece too. Absolutely. Small bits instant gratification project, and you can definitely put in some good practice there. Okay. Um, oh, thanks, Miss Monique. She says, thanks so very much. You cleared up a lot of questions. I think I might be able to tackle this now. Thanks for the great tutorial. I'm super glad to hear it. I don't want people to think, you know, that you have to hold yourself back from trying free motion quilting because you don't have this or you don't have that. 
jump right in. Just, you know, check the settings on your machine, get yourself a foot that will allow you to do it, whether it's low shank or high shank, make sure you check your user manual. And then, you know, some of these things are just added accessories that help, like the sew slip to mat, the added extension table that you can set up if you have a machine like this. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it's just a matter of practicing and picking your first project that you want to free motion quilt. Okay. So I hope that that helped y'all. Oh, we went over by 10 minutes. Girl, you running your mouth today. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you got some tips and um, definitely check us out because you can see we sell the machines, the tables. We have all the supplies that you need to get started from thread to batting and all that stuff. So links are below for you. Thank you for tuning in this week. I will see y'all next week and enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend, everybody. Happy quilting. Bye.